Chapter 6 After a night of breathtaking sex, Brandon surprised me by his gentle and considerate manner, asking me if he was hurting me when he first entered my body. He knew it was my first time, and he approached me as if I were a china doll easily broken. At my prep school, I heard horror stories of how rich, arrogant, and clueless guys treated the girls they dated. I asked my roommate why she put up with such disrespect and her only answer was, they're rich, and if I can land one well-connected asshole, I can do whatever I want and never have to worry again. I responded in a naive, unsophisticated soft voice, even if you don't love them? She glanced at me as if I had just killed her cat, and she had no attachment to it. Well, a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. You have to get the money while you're young. And what's love got to do with this anyway? With all that money, you can buy love if that's what you're looking for. That took my breath. Here in my own world thinking that if I found love, then that's all I needed in life. Someone to love and love me. I chalked that up to something that had been drummed into their heads. That marrying outside of their social and monetary circles were a taboo and to ensure that they would marry well, they would put up with all kinds of disgusting and demeaning behavior. Looking at Brandon lying peaceful, I couldn't imagine that he was anything like the guys I had heard about. I prejudged him from the time I laid eyes on him because of the stories I heard from my roommate. People are never what they appear to be. My insecurities judged him unfairly. But then lightning struck my sex-saturated brain and it hit me, Brandon is getting married in two days. I forgot about his forthcoming marriage in my lust for everything he had to offer, his body, his love, him. He could never give me any more than what I was getting now. Sexual release and a fairy tale life for a few days. I wasn't in his social class and I knew nothing about him. At this moment, I thought about googling him. I wanted to see the kind of woman he would choose to spend his life with. I wanted to know if she was pretty. But of course she had to be, and far smarter than me, because I was sleeping with a man that would be married to her. And I had given myself to him freely. She was probably a virgin, and saved herself for that night he would take her in his arms, and state that he loved her the way he did when he took my virginity from me. Our time was coming to an end, and all I thought about was I was going to lose this man, and I would never be the same. I turned to gaze at him, and his arms clenched me in a tight squeeze. He never opened his eyes. He was gorgeous lying there next to me, and I could only dream because that's all it was or ever would be, just a dream. The sun rose on the horizon, and it filled the room with orange and yellow blotting out the white in the room. I felt as if I could touch it if I got up and went to the beach. This experience made more dramatic because it occurred with a man I desired and wanted more than life itself. Letting out a large sigh, I managed to satisfy myself with today. Today is all we have, Brandon had said when I first met him. I realize now he prepared me understand that what we shared was temporary. Leaning over Brandon to kiss him for these wonderful few days, I spied a figure standing in the doorway. She stood dressed in expensive designer black slacks and a white blouse. With her Louis Vuitton red and black bag, clutching it firmly in one hand, which caught my eye before her face became visible. I knew it had to be serious, because I felt the anger she emitted. I didn't know who this person was who brought these strong vibes cloaking the peaceful bed and room. She stood in the shadows of the room, perched in the doorway, tapping her impatient foot. I gave Brandon a hard nudge in his side. He mumbled, What's up, princess? There's a woman standing in the doorway, I whispered. With his eyes still closed and his lips turned up in a smile, he said, Oh, that's just Carmen, our maid. She does the tidying up around here. Well, if it's the maid, she's wearing some expensive clothes to make the beds, I whispered. Brandon's eyes shot open, and he sat up in a quick flash forgetting he was naked under the covers. 
The quilt fell low showing his chest and below his waist, and revealing my naked breasts, leaving nothing to the woman's imagination. Mom, what are you doing here? Brandon questioned with surprise tattooed on his face. It's my house. She crossed her arms. I think I'm entitled to go wherever I want. The sun rose completely and cast a glow brightening the room. Now I saw her face. She raised an eyebrow. Her hair blonde, but once she was a dark-haired beauty because of her olive skin. A slight woman only five feet. Brandon looked nothing like her. He must have resembled his father. Aren't you going to introduce me to your... She paused several times trying to find the right words so as not to insult me or Brandon. Your young lady. She cared about his feelings, and maybe somewhere deep she remembered that she had been young once. Mom Tyler Tyler Mom. She didn't say anything or make pretense at being happy to meet me because she wasn't happy to meet me. And I wasn't matured enough to act sophisticated and make pretense that this was not a big deal for me to be sleeping with her son. Brandon, I need to see you. We have to talk. In a few, Mom. Unless you want to discuss this matter in front of... She searched around for my name. Tyler, then you should get out of this bed and talk to me. Her eyes shot daggers at both of us, and I felt more naked than I had been. I pulled the cover up to my neck. I coming now, Mom. Can I get dressed? He said, raising his voice higher. You didn't have a problem getting undressed, I see. Make it a minute, or I'm coming back in. She turned to walk out of the door when she decided to make me more uncomfortable if that is possible, and say, How old are you, Tyler? I saw Brandon grimace and close his eyes. I answered, 18. I thought as much. And she turned and strutted out. Brandon looked at me and shook his head. He didn't explain, and rushed to the bathroom and came out wearing a monogrammed robe with BC threaded in gold. He reached the open door and closed it behind him. The minute he left, I wrapped myself in a sheet and opened a small gap in the door so I could hear. I wouldn't have heard anything but the shouting and their voices reverberated. I heard Brandon's loud voice, I'm a man and my life is my life. If I want to fuck it up, it's on me. Then his mom stated, don't use that tone in words with me. What is wrong with you? You have this wonderful woman willing to commit to a life with you. When you disappeared, I knew what that was about. You have found some teenager. You don't understand, mother, I love Tyler, he said. I didn't know if those words were for me, but it made an impression. He told his mother that he loved me. I do understand. You are young, and you will get over her. And she stepped away, turning her back to him. I will never, she cut him off. You have to go through with that marriage, she said. I don't want to hear this. Brandon shouted, standing up looking down at his mother. She walked closer and took his hand to quiet his anger. You will do as you are told, and come back to New York with me and marry Angela. Brandon pulled away from her and turned his back. She moved closer and passed her hand up and down his back. He appeared to relax. You can't. And she stopped mid-sentence. Brandon was facing the door, and I saw anger and hurt play over him. His mother had won. I'm sorry, Brandon, she said. But you have to consider your future and ours. Look, Mom, I can't discuss this any longer. He walked away from her and headed for the room. I eased the door shut and rushed into the shower. He stayed in the bedroom, pacing back and forward on the wood flooring. I could hear the creaks of the old floor. When he walked into the bathroom, I turned off the shower. Brandon stood naked waiting for me outside the door. I opened the door. Kiss me, he said in a low desperate voice. He held my face in his large hands. Tell me you love me no matter what. 
I looked at him and said what I felt. I love you no matter what. Tell me that you want to be with me, even. He couldn't bring himself to complete the sentence, because he knew that it was a selfish act on his part. So I completed it for him. I want to be with you even if you're married, I confessed. Maybe I spoke too soon, and that wasn't what he wanted to tell me. I could kick myself because I gave him a way out. He didn't have to tell me anything. I had committed myself to him, even if he married someone else. A peace came over him, and he was no longer the worried young man that allowed his carefree life to be torn apart. I saw it in his face, his eyes brightened, his closed mouth turned upward into a smile. I had agreed to be with him and love him even if he married. And that was what he planned to do on Saturday, because he had made a promise to Angela and her family. I didn't need to know her name. Knowing her name would make her real. I hoped he would break his promise, but he was a man of his word. I was eighteen, impressionable, stupid, and in love. I thought that I could change our future because of my love for Brandon Charles. And I did mine. Chapter 7 He gave a slight wave to his mother, and she gazed up with narrow eyes and then climbed into the limo. Her driver shut Nora's door, then he entered the car and got situated in the driver's seat, and taking his place behind the wheel he drove off. Brandon and I heard the motor, and he walked through the patio doors onto the veranda, and he walked around to the front of the house watching the limo disappear. He returned with a frown on his handsome face. He stood in silence looking at me and rubbing his chin. A day-old beard had begun to show. I have to shower and shave, he said casually. He ambled into the bathroom without saying any more. His mother left as she had come, quiet and without fanfare. Her black limo and her driver leaving us to what? Me staring into the Atlantic Ocean wanting something that will never be. We spent our nights in those chairs after we made love. We sat dreaming and discussing a future together, taking in the full moon. I sat on his lap cradled in his strong arms gazing lovingly into his face with one desire, to have him fall in love with me and never leave me. I headed out of the patio doors to sit in a rocker and think about my life. There was an old faded white rocker with paint peeling, but the cushions were soft and new. I enjoyed the comforting feeling that it brought me. I sat to think about and piece together the conversation I heard when Brandon, argued with his mother. It was like a puzzle. I knew nothing of him to be able to put the pieces together. What did she mean by have you told her? What was more important than telling me he was getting married? Which he did. I tried to figure out what it could be, but it was all guesses. What if I guessed wrong? Brandon walked from the shower with nothing but a towel wrapped around his waist. I wanted to make love to him, to convince him not to go. My mind said, if I did something he liked, he wouldn't marry Angela. I could tell he liked oral sex. It was the way he closed his eyes and his mouth slightly opened, and he moaned in my ear when I stroked his penis. Time ran out. It was too late now to hold him with sex. Besides, I couldn't if I wanted to. I didn't know enough. In less than a week we became lovers. In less than a week the old me had died, and I was no longer daddy's little girl, but a woman who desired a man, who would hold me in his arms and make love to me when he couldn't love his wife. And that man was Brandon. When I saw him next, he was standing fully dressed in front of me. He had on a pair of expensive jeans, and a white shirt rolled up on each sleeve where I saw an expensive watch. I didn't know how much a watch like that would cost, and I wasn't willing to guess. All I knew about was $200 watches, and they were shining and ostentatious. But this watch was large without being showy. He kept looking down to check the time. Then I spotted a black limousine pull up, and the same driver arrived. I looked at him, and he didn't say a word. 
Brandon leaned down to kiss me. His lips brushed my lips and I jumped to my feet. Take me with you. I sounded desperate. I didn't think I would see him again. Stay here until tomorrow. I'll be back tonight. What's going on? Is something wrong? I queried in desperation. He turned to walk back into the cottage. I followed behind him, hoping for another kiss. When he reached the door he turned, and I looped my arms around his neck and he kissed me with passion. His breathing shallow and intense when he broke away and left me standing there. He whispered, I'll be back tonight, princess. His eyes and how he looked at me pierced my heart and body, made me believe him. I ran open the patio doors and stood holding on to the wood railing with my hands griping it. He looked up then stepped in the car and disappeared behind the dark tinted windows. The driver, whom I had never been introduced to, shot me a fatalistic stare. He stood for a few minutes before he entered the car, and I thought I saw him shake his head. I sat on the porch until dawn, waiting for him to return. When I couldn't take it anymore, I walked into the house, and breakfast was prepared for two people. He hadn't spoken to the housekeeper, and as clockwork she prepared everything and left without being seen. She even made the bed. I wondered if she saw me sitting outside in the chill of the air waiting on Brandon, who had abandoned me. Today was Saturday, Brandon's wedding day, and silly me waited for him to call. I waited for someone to show, anyone who would tell me something. I guessed all interested parties were in attendance at the wedding, or preparing for the wedding. Finally, I got the message I had been waiting for. No one cared about me. No one knew that I was in love with Brandon and that Brandon was in love with me, not even me. But how could he be in love? He left me out here all alone. I remembered that Chris had given me one of her smartphones. I rushed to find my purse and in it was the phone. I hoped I could get a signal, and better yet, I was hoping that the battery wasn't dead. Chris. Chris. It's me. Tyler. Where the fuck have you been? I've been trying to reach you. I guess you haven't checked your messages, I left a ton of them. I've been here with Brandon. I know but that's not good. His fiancé called around looking for him. It seems he has been missing in action since Friday. Friday was his bachelor's party. I didn't know. You sound sad. Don't tell me you fell for him for Christ's sake, she said. Don't yell but I'm in love with him, I said with tears pooling in my eyes. Don't start to cry. It's my fault. I regret taking you there. And I regret introducing you to him. He has a terrible reputation with girls like you. What poor and stupid. No. Don't rag on yourself, you're not even close to stupid. He likes girls young. Eighteen is his thing. I need your help again. I have to talk fast because the battery is low, and I don't have a charger. Can you arrange to have a taxi pick me up and take me to the nearest airport? I'm broke and I can't pay for a plane ticket and the cab fare. I don't know how far this place is from the main airport, because we came on his private jet. I'll pay you back every cent. Don't worry about that. It's my fault. No. I have to pay you. Okay. If it makes you feel better. You don't have to worry. I'll get you home. Just wait until I lay eyes on him. Are you invited to the wedding? I asked. Yes. Patrick and I are headed there now, she said to me. I don't want you to say anything to him. I'm a big girl. I can handle it, I said trying to control my tears which were falling like an open faucet. Christina paid my travel expenses which came to over $3,000. I reached home when my parents were asleep.
Using my key, I opened the door, and all was quiet. The lights were off to save on the electricity bills. My father tried to save money on everything except his Sunday morning paper. That Sunday morning after Brandon's wedding, I woke at six, put coffee on for my parents and rushed out to get the paper. My hands shaking as I opened the paper. There was a picture of the beautiful couple. I thumbed inside to see a detailed account of the marriage of Mr. and Mrs. Brandon Charles. A picture of their home and where they would honeymoon was detailed. I threw the magazine down and tried to tear it page by page when my father came in the kitchen and reached for it. What did that paper ever do to you? He said smiling and half amused at seeing me trying to rip the paper apart. Here's your coffee, I said. I handed him a cup and he glanced at me and drank a sip. Where's mom? I asked. She's not feeling well. His brow creased. I'm going up to see her, I said placing my coffee down on the cabinet. A cabinet that my father promised my mother years ago that if he had spare change, he would buy her a new kitchen with a granite countertop, stainless steel refrigerator, stove, and microwave oven. The works. But he was 68, and jobs for a man his age was hard to come by. No, he said taking my arm. Let her sleep. We need to talk. What about? I said trying for my good girl persona that had been diminished by my lack of control and sleeping with Brandon. I know you're an adult now. But be careful. You can ruin your whole life with one indiscretion. He didn't know I had already thrown caution to the wind and stepped in quicksand, and I was drowning. Drowning in jealousy, lust, and need. I needed the arms and love of the first man I gave myself to, and I was now officially dead. Here lies Tyler Burns, a good girl. Dead at 18 because she fell in love. Don't worry, Dad, I'll be careful. I saw a spark of light come into his tired gray eyes. He had fallen for my lie. I hated lying to him. He could always see through the lies when I was a child and teenager. He kept me safe by knowing when I was lying to him, and when I wanted to do some of the things girls were doing at my age. Like drinking and staying out all night. Even sneaking in boys in the middle of the night when their parents were asleep. I think he felt he had done a good job just to get me to this age without being pregnant. He did a great job, and I was grateful for his leadership but I had grown up and he didn't even know. I had stepped out into the precipice of life, and I had jumped. Feeling a sense of accomplishment, my father kissed me on my cheek. Now what college are you going to attend? You have all kinds of offers for full scholarship at prestigious universities. As a business and finance major, you can write your own ticket. I'm going to New York to Columbia University, but first I need to get a job. You and mom need help. I can take the train home in the evenings. A wave of concern and relief washed across his face, but he didn't say a word. He couldn't afford to contribute to my education. He needed help too. If it's too late for me to come home, I can stay with Chris. Her family has a loft on the east side, and they would be happy if she and I roomed together. You know how I feel about Christina. But you're an adult, and you can make your own decisions. He sighed. That was a big compromise for him. Mom and I will not be around always to guide you. Ah, Dad. You're still a young man, I said holding his hand. Sixties is not old, you're in your prime. Eighty is old. He appeared to be delighted at that statement. He smiled. He straightened his shoulders and lifted his head, stood and walked to the stove with a spring in his step. He took a deep breath and said, I need to get your mother's breakfast. He walked to the fridge, opened the door with his back to me and said, Someone called this morning. Who? It was a man. I glanced at him. A young man named Brandon. I stood glued to a spot on the worn linoleum floor. 
afraid to raise my head and meet my father's glances, lest he find out my secret. What did you tell him? That you were sleeping, and I didn't want to disturb you. Did he say any more? No. My father turned looking at me as my eyes were glued to the spot on the floor that I didn't want to leave, or couldn't leave because I thought that I would die. He continued, he didn't sound like the usual boys that asked you out to a movie. You know, that cocky boy, the one with nothing on his mind but one thing. I saw through him, he said with a small smile, that's why I drove you to the movies and waited for you, remember? I know daddy that was Sean. We both laughed at the same time. He wasn't expecting you to drive us to the movies. This boy, or should I say man, had this refined speech, and he was very respectful, except for the early morning call. I like him, he said, and then he reached for the teapot in the cabinet. Yes. He is respectful, I agreed. Until he gets what he wants, I thought. If he calls back, tell him I'm not here. My father didn't understand my behavior. I wasn't acting like his little girl and I could see the curious glances and furrowed brow that indicated that something was wrong. My heart fluttered, and then I became angry. I rushed from the kitchen, opened my mother's door to see her quietly sleeping. Closing her bedroom door, I rushed to my room holding on to the last bit of myself. Angry at Brandon, I cried. I know I had agreed to be his lady-in-waiting. Waiting for him to meet me when he had time. But the minute I arrived home, I came from under the spell of that remote cottage on the beach.